What's going on guys? Jesse with Hunt Performance. Today I'm working on a Case International 8840 Swather. Let's get into it before we do. Please check out the links in the description, like, and comment on this video. Also, if you guys are one of those people that is watching my video and isn't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below and the notification bell. Let you know when I put out new content if you guys like these videos and want to keep seeing them. And uh, links in the description if you want to support the channel. And I think that's all I need to say and let's work on this thing. So this, like I said, Case International 8840 Swather. So you drive it, you cut hay, hay comes out the back and then you let it sit and then you bale it and then you feed it to your cows in the winter or horses or whatever. This one, it has a 4BT Cummins in it. Well, I'm not sure if this is 4BT Cummins because it says made by J.I. Case, which they did have 4BT Cummins in these and it looks like a 4BT Cummins. Like, in every way, shape, and form. So I'm gonna call it a 4BT Cummins for for ease sake. Anyway, 4BT Cummins engine uh, just basically runs a big hydraulic pump. These things, this old, these swathers all just basically run off hydraulics. They got hydraulics all over the place. But we have a few problems. Number one, the hydraulic level is low. We have bubbles over here that should show fluid. They don't at all. So very low on hydraulic fluid. Number two. We have a hydraulic leak. This guy up in here is, uh, I believe, loose. I don't believe it's bad. I believe it's just loose fitting. So we got to fix that. And then we got a last problem. Number three is the head will not completely disengage when you run the lever. So we got to fix that at some point. It'll still work without us fixing that, but we need to get it fixed. But I'm going to tackle the problems in order. Number one, I'm going to put hydraulic fluid in it. And then number two, and then maybe number three today too, but we'll see. Anyway, let's throw some hydraulic fluid in it. Open the cover back up. Let's check and see. Yeah, definitely not anything in the bubble. But I put 10 gallons in it. Yeah, I came out here yesterday and did a little work to see what I needed. Put 10 gallons in it. So we're a lot closer than we were. But let's get that leak fixed and then we'll get her started up and see what we can do about the uh, head disconnecting. Probably move it down to the house and then do that. But anyway, leak. <sighs> Gotta love the good old crescent wrench. Oh, but let's see. This fitting right here is loosey goosey. I don't know. It's probably a three quarter, I would imagine. On an old piece of American farm equipment. This is in the way. This ground is in the way. So that's nice. But no matter, we're gonna get her tightened up. This probably lives in here, probably shouldn't be. But that's out of the way this arm which what does this arm do looks like it engages the pump or something not really sure could lift the head anyway a little more uh, come on come on slide in there Now we're going to start it up to see if it's leaking, and I almost guarantee it's going to leak from that lower one. It's not going to leak there probably, but it's going to leak down there now. Because that probably should be like that. So, let's start it. Yeah. 
freaking moss everywhere this time of year. Booey, nice and warm. All right, well, okay. we got juice. Turn the AC down. Oh, see how the edge is running? That's because this lever won't go any farther back. So, gonna have to work on that, but. See, we got throttle. Let's go see if we got any leaks. We do have a low oil light. That's the hydraulic oil. So that's nice that we do have that. Everything seems to be working properly. Only 3,292 hours on this guy. Not too bad. Let's go look. There's supposed to be covers that go over this, but who needs that? We'll look for them. They're around here somewhere. Um, yeah, but it runs good. Probably uses a little oil, but what old equipment doesn't? It sounds good. Okay, I'm back in the cab. Hey, guess what, guys? I know most old equipment air conditioner doesn't work but that air conditioner is good in this sun gun okay you see it's trying you guys can hear that hear the engine idling down it's trying to pick that head up I can push it down let's see if the tilt works oh can you hear let me see it tilting come up and then up So the tilt cylinder's right here, and it's working. So what that does is the head goes down so far, and then, oh, my wife's yelling at me. Let's see what's wrong. Air filter cover fell off. Got it tightened back down. Hopefully, it shouldn't go anywhere. Those free lines are freezing cold. Pretty impressive. But I was looking uh, at the nameplate on this engine. I'll turn you around and show you. See, it says, manufactured in USA by Consolidated Diesel Company, an affiliate of J.I. Case, a Tennessee company, ringing in Wisconsin. You know, 
But if even, you know, timing pins in the right spot, injection, I mean, it's a 4BT Cummins, guys. It's a, it's a 4BT Cummins. There's no doubt. It is fuel water or fuel filters are in a normal spot. Oil cooler, oil filters in the normal spot. It's a 4BT Cummins. Or it is an exact copy or licensed copy of 4BT Cummins. I think uh, I'm going to try to start it again. Give it a little onion and uh, see if we can get the head picked up. Because if we can get the head picked up, I can get it to the house and I can work on it some more. Otherwise, I'm going to have to bring more fluid back tomorrow and work on this again. Yeah. So, go at it. Ah, oh, battery cables. Oh. Freaking battery cables. Let's show, let me show you this. So, this is supposed to have two batteries. But, of course, it doesn't. It's got one, and it's fine, but... Oh. <laughs> that's probably why... That's, like, super loose. Yeah, I'm gonna fix that real quick. Okay, got the line tight and I got the um, battery cable fixed, so we should start, so. Should work. Yeah. Give her a little. Tilt's working. You see here, fully engaged. See how much faster it runs? Now I try to disengage and it should disengage all the way. It doesn't. I gotta figure that guy out. Let's see if it moves a little. Oh, parking brake. See if we. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Uh... Definitely. Get the, definitely gonna have to get the head picked up before I try to move it. So, gotta get more hydraulic fluid. We're back. Hey, to run some errands. We're back. We got her started, Sam and I, and we are gonna head to the house. So let me get turned around. Let's head there. It's a few days later. Back on the 8840 case. What is it? Self-propelled wind rower, I believe, is what it's called in the manual. Um, I just finished, finished putting 15 more gallons of hydraulic fluid in it, and we are now full. That took 25 total gallons. Uh, I'm gonna check the coolant because I know the coolant was low at one point. And then once I check the coolant, I'm gonna make sure it starts. And then once it starts, probably shut it down or figure out about that cable or the linkage to completely disconnect the head, that issue we were having. So into it. I'm sure it's very bright, but I checked the coolant, tightened up the battery cable because it was still loose and uh, kind of took a peek at this. A little bit didn't get much but let's see if it starts so okay. we got power let's let it
Yeah, this thing's got some issues with loose cables. I'm gonna go search around and see if I can find anything. Try to get it to start. Yeah, because if it doesn't start, really, I can't work on the other. I mean, I could, but it's not really worth working on the other stuff. So I'm gonna go, uh, yeah, look for a loose cable. Well, I had to jump the starter off. Got it started. This thing now. Anyway, I got it started. Uh, it runs good once I start it and everything works correctly. I think maybe the uh, start solenoid is bad. It kind of has a start solenoid like uh, old Ford truck does, like the 70s Fords. Has a start, it has that start solenoid that you know that's mounted on the inside of the fender well. Definitely similar style to that, and honestly, it's probably bad and it, it probably needs replaced. And it's probably cheap too. So I think I'm going to look into one of those just to eliminate it because all the wires are tight, everything's working, and it started right up. So I'm going to head and go ahead and look into one of those. Uh, the linkage wise, not really sure. Trying to figure out what linkage controls it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's it for this video. I'm gonna end it here. I'm gonna do a little more research and I need some help to move this linkage back and forth. Anyway guys, I'm Jesse, this is Hunt Performance. I got a couple other channels. I'll put the links in the description. One's about rant, my ranch and stuff that we have out here. And then the other one is about uh, views. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps me out a bunch. I'm trying to grow this channel. I really like working on equipment and pickups and building stuff and welding and so that's kind of like one of my big passions and I, I really haven't had much of a hobby lately I've just been working so it'd be nice to have a hobby and uh, if you guys want to watch that these videos it would encourage me to uh, do more so uh, next time probably have a pipe fence video I would imagine I gotta go finish that project and then uh, I'm gonna have to grease this bad boy and get in the field and see if it works I'm gonna go take it for a test run we'll see Anyway guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.